got, I think, 37 million cars um, on the road. Uh, I think there are over a billion cars in the world on the road. Um, and I don't think anyone's of any doubt now that we are moving to a decarbonized uh, society, um, which begs the question, what is going to happen to all those cars? Are we literally going to scrap 37 million cars? So should we proactively upgrade all our cars now and switch to in the, the latest environmentally friendly ones, or is it actually better to hang on to what we've got and use it for the full useful life? Hi, I'm Nick Molden. I'm founder and chief executive of Emissions Analytics. We do real world emissions testing, which means we can work out the environmental impact of vehicles, whether that's from exhaust pipes, tires, brakes or whatever. So the average car in the UK bought new today could be something like a Nissan Qashqai or a, a Ford Cougar. As a rough guide, those will emit two to three tonnes of CO2 per year. Uh, from an average driver driving about 15,000 kilometres uh, per year for producing an electric car, you're talking in the range of about eight to 10 tonnes of manufacturing emissions to produce the battery. You're looking at roughly speaking four years of driving the vehicle until you get to break even, i.e. that the two types of car would emit about the same in total, which is roughly about 60 to 70,000 kilometers of driving. Why it's, it's really important is because of the longevity of the battery pack. For these electric vehicles really to give big CO2 reductions, really they need to get to about 14 years, which is the average life expectancy of a typical vehicle. If they achieve that in practice, then they are going to be delivering significant life cycle reductions in CO2. And we convert combustion engine cars to electric, uh, which means that we take out all the combustion engine related components from a combustion engine car um, and we put in batteries and electric motor um, and the control systems that we need to drive that car as an electric car, as an EV. Um, and that means that we're saving uh, the need to create new cars, um, so that's 17 tonnes of CO2 on average for a new car uh, to be made. Um, and we get to keep some of these lovely old cars on the road. It's, you know, it's still a 1973 Carmen gear, the horn still honks and the indicators still indicate and it's still the original car, um, just EV now. We've been overwhelmed with inquiries from about the last year, but and, and that's just increasing. Yeah, I mean, we just need to go out driving in one of our cars and people pull up alongside us and be like, oh my God, is that really electric? Um, and oh, it's amazing, and how can I do the same thing? Um, we have a problem that it's still expensive. Um, our base conversion costs around 20 grand, and that really is, is not what I would call affordable. Um, and our goal is to offer affordable conversions. So, well, I can see that it can work for classic cars or niche cars where it's a hobby, a you know, a labour of love and you want to keep that vehicle on the road. I get that and that comes at a price. But would you upgrade your six-year-old Nissan Qashqai to make it a battery electric vehicle? My tip would be save yourself a lot of time, hassle and money and just go and buy a new car. The issue with battery electric vehicles is they're a lot heavier and so they're, they're increasing crash safety risk. Heavier vehicle crashing into a lighter vehicle has inevitable consequences for the people in the lighter vehicle. They're putting pressure on the physical infrastructure and most importantly they're wearing tyres faster and tyres are highly polluting items with electric vehicles which typically let's say are four to five hundred kilograms heavier than their equivalent internal combustion engine, is that you have to put much bigger, specially designed tires on those vehicles, which typically will wear faster. And tire, tires are made essentially, and perhaps ironically, with fossil fuels, with from oil. Synthetic rubber is derived from oil. So you've got a lot of the same pollutants that you would have found in a tailpipe in tires as well. And, and so my strong suggestion is we need to think much more holistically about how these vehicles affect the environment 
not just fixate on a tailpipe and eliminating that. If you want to broadly carry on doing what you want to do and you've been doing before, what is the best way of, do, of doing that? I think the answer would be go for a hybrid vehicle, but also consider eliminating a few of the journeys that actually add no value to you. A hybrid car compared to a normal internal combustion engine is about 30% less CO2. So if we converted all 500 million vehicles um, in the European car park to hybrids, if I had a magic wand and did that overnight, that would reduce CO2 by about 30%. Uh, then the behavioural change is the other aspect that, that we could certainly do. So if we could reduce the number of journeys by 5 to 10%, that itself would make a significant dent. How do I see the future of cars? That is the question to ask. The answer is certainly not everyone buy a battery electric vehicle in a blind, unquestioning way.